Can we see how much damage was caused by a storm simply by looking at APRS? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So my buddy Kenny KC4OJS showed me this little trick using APRS and I wanted to share it with you guys uh, today. It's how we can track what's going on on the ground after a storm or an earthquake or something like that. What's actually going on on the ground and we can get a glimpse of that by looking at the APRS data. So today I want to show you guys a couple of different ways to get this data. One is super easy and the other one is a little bit more complicated but not by much. So we already know the path that uh, Hurricane Idalia took as it made landfall in northern Florida. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and take a couple of seconds to look at an APRS map, the before and the after that storm made landfall. Now, to grab this data, I simply went over to APRS.fi and I set the show last option over on the top right hand side to 24 hours. Now, you can see on the map that Idelia had already made landfall and the eye of the storm was about to cross uh, the Georgia Florida line. Now, this map is showing us everything that was heard over APRS over the last 24 hours. Now, let's change the show last option to only show me the last hour. And what you'll notice is a lot of stations disappear off of the map. Now, we can't count every station as disappearing off the map because some stations, let's take cars for instance, those are going to come and go off of the map all the time. Other stations like uh, certain weather reports, you'll notice those on this map, they're a blue circle with a white W in them. There's some sort of weather report, although I'm not exactly uh, positive of what those are. I just know there's some sort of weather report. So we kind of have to exclude those. Um, and then obviously exclude all of the cars, trucks, things like that that are on the road. However, what we want to focus on is things like objects that we expect to always be on the map under normal circumstances. Uh, let's back up for a second and take a look uh, right down here around Cedar Key and you will see a airplane object on the map. There's one just up above it to the north. Those are objects that mark those particular airports and under normal circumstances that's an object that I would always expect to see on the map. Uh, take a look down here again in Cedar Key and you will see KR1FLE-10. More than likely, that is a APRS digipeter in that area. So that's another uh, station that I would expect to see on the map all the time. Now, take a look up around Live Oak and you will see N4SVC. Uh, his station is up there, and that's a house, uh, the house icon that you see. That's uh, either a digipeter or an eye gate, uh, I would suspect, something along those lines. Again, though, it's one of those objects that I would expect to see day in and day out if I came and looked at this area. The last objects I want to kind of point out to you is the uh, blue circles with WX. Those are citizens. Um, citizen weather uh, stations, basically, those typically report over the internet. That's not typically uh, something that goes out over RF. And that's kind of key to pay attention to as we look at this map. Now, watch down at, in the Cedar Key area when I flip back and forth between these two maps. You'll notice that those airplane objects just went away, and so did that digipeter that we see in the 24-hour map. Take a look next at the Live Oak area, and you'll see the same thing happens to N4SVC. Uh, that one completely goes away as well. So what does this really tell us? Well, it tells us a couple of things, or possibly a couple of things. A, uh, it tells us that the internet is probably out in those areas. Something else it tells us is there is possibly a power outage in that area, and that would indicate that they do not have a backup battery 
uh, set up for those particular stations. Now, if we're talking about the weather stations, when we flip uh, back and forth between these, you'll see a few of those disappear as well. Well, that's at least the internet's down, or maybe the power is out in that area as well. So we can glean quite a bit of information about which areas probably had storm damage or at least lost power, uh, lost power or internet during uh, Hurricane Idalia as it made landfall. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the map. This is August the 31st as I'm recording this, and I've got the show last set to 24 hours. Uh, notice this station right here. This is a Winlink Gateway station. We saw some... Oop, I zoomed out a little bit by mistake. We saw some of uh, the Winlink Gateways go offline as well uh, when we were looking between those earlier two images. This is an actual live image, so I'm on APRS.fi at the moment, uh, and I'm set to that 24-hour view. Let's change that to the last hour. And you'll see that that Winlink Digipeters, or I'm sorry, the Winlink Gateway station here has disappeared as well. So that station has probably lost internet or power over the last 24 hours. They might have had a battery backup that kept them online a little bit longer uh, than some of the other stations. Or they may have just been fortunate to have uh, not lost power until a day after the storm had come through. But this is just a unique way to utilize APRS data to see kind of what the situation on the ground actually looks like. Now, I want to go ahead and jump over to the computer and show you another way to get this data into a program like Yak. Okay, so here we are inside of the Yak application, and I don't have any ports uh, enabled at the moment. I want to walk you guys through this and show you how I am doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to File, Configure, and Expert Mode. Once that dialog box opens up, I want to make sure that my maximum age to view is set to 30 minutes. That's going to drop off objects on the map uh, as quick as possible, or as quick as uh, this application will allow. And that's kind of important because we don't want to keep objects on the map once they have stopped transmitting. So I'm going to set both of these to 30 minutes. Next, let's go ahead and click on ports. And I have this port 2 already set up, but I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did. Now, if you're going to use Yak in this capacity, you don't want to have any other ports enabled. In fact, on this particular computer, I don't even have a radio connected to it because we're not going to be doing anything over RF. We're simply going to be using the internet to gather this data. I'm going to highlight that port 2. If you don't have this, then you would click add and we'll go ahead and show you what those settings would look like. You can see right here that the port type is APRS.IS, indicating that this is an internet port. Now, I set the server host name to n0am.aprs2.net, uh, and that's good for North America. If you're somewhere else, you want to pick uh, the closest server for your particular location. I did set retry connect indefinitely uh, by placing a check mark here. Don't modify the server port number. You want to uh, put your call sign in, and you want to put your APRS.IS password in or passcode. And I'll leave a link to how to generate your passcode down in the description below, or I'll pin it as the first comment. The next thing we want to make sure we have is this APRS.IS filter. What this is going to do is it's going to tell the APRS servers to give you everything within a 300, and I'm not sure if that's kilometers or miles, uh, but whichever it is, a 300 kilometer radius, which will feed all of that data into the YAC application. Now I'm going to just click cancel here. Once you've got everything configured correctly and you've saved that information, you do want to go ahead and put a check mark here if you don't have one already that says to enable this port. Now, under the beacon tab, I have marked this to allow the station beacon to happen. I've set my display symbol to TCP IP. And in the text, I put that this is a monitor-only station. That way, anyone else seeing this on the map doesn't mistake this for a Digipeter or an iGate. I am simply monitoring 
for what's going on. Once we've got this, we can click Save Changes if we need to, and then click Close. And that is all we need to do to set this up. Now, currently, I have my station roughly in my home area. But let's assume this is Nashville, Tennessee, up here in uh, the top left corner. Let's assume that I wanted to monitor what was going on in Nashville. What I can do is I can simply come up here somewhere close by. I can right click and I can say move home here and what that's going to do is that's actually going to and it's going to ask me do you really want to move it and i am going to say yes what that's going to do is that's going to place my station here and i could have done the same thing during the storm i just didn't have a chance to get to it but i could have done the same thing during hurricane idelia and actually put my station somewhere down in florida right in the eye of the storm then, if I wanted to, I could have uh, done screen captures of this screen here with all of those stations as they were coming and going off of the map. This is another way that you could uh, capture that same data that we were looking at on APRS.fi while ago. To make this a little bit cooler, if you maybe set something up to do a auto screen capture every, say, five minutes, then you would have a set of images that you could drop into a time-lapse uh, video and play that back so that you could get an idea. You could literally watch that like it was a movie as objects were coming and going. So a couple of different ways we might can use APRS data to be able to see what's going on as a storm passes through an area. I hope you found today's information useful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.